So I'm at 10,513 miles now. Let's start the engine. It's been sitting all night long and see if we can hear any valve train noise whatsoever. Absolutely none. It just starts right up. No chatter, no clatter, no tapping, nothing. As quiet as can be. And so I've got, what, about 6,000, 7,000 miles or so on this oil so far. I mean, it's working exactly like I figured. All right, now let's do a lukewarm start. See if we can hear any valve train noise at all. Absolutely not. She purrs like a kitten. All right, so on a brand new engine, I always like to do the first oil change a little bit early. You know, it's a good idea to get that first oil change out at like, I don't know, four or 5,000 miles. Don't go a full eight or 10,000. First oil change, change it about half the time. That way you're getting those uh, initial metals and particulates from break-in out of your engine, right? So last fall at about four or 5,000 miles, I went ahead and changed the oil on this. And when I did, I shot a video and I titled it, My Hemi Tick is Gone. And that video ended up doing really well. Uh, so today we're gonna revisit that because my Hemi Tick is still gone. Uh, when I shot that video, a lot of people, I think, doubted that that's really what's, you know, causing this. But uh, I just wanted to show you some clips from a cold start earlier this morning. And I uh, also just did a lukewarm start a few minutes ago. And, and the rattling and, you know, uh, the ticking and all that really disconcerting valve train noise it's completely gone and you could see it and hear it in those videos. So when I first got this truck, the first 5,000 miles or so, it ticked like crazy, especially on a cold startup. But sometimes, you know, you could drive the truck, park it for an hour, come back, start it again, and it would do it even when it was kind of warm. Um, I changed the oil, I put 5W30 viscosity back in it and all of the valve train chatter and noise immediately went away. So this oil cycle right here has got like six or 7,000 miles on it now. I'm, uh, I'm actually coming up on 11,000 miles on the odometer now. So uh, probably closer to 7,000 miles on this particular oil cycle. And it is still running as smooth as can be on the 5W30. And I just wanted to show that to you to prove to the naysayers that this really does cure that problem. I'm telling you, from the factory, when they specify that 0W20 watery oil, it is not sufficient to properly lubricate a V8 engine like this, especially if you're going to be in summer heat, like I'm going to be here very shortly. If you're towing a trailer, you know, really building up some heat under the hood here, you need more protection. Okay. And as we went over in that first video, these engines came out in 2003 for the 2003 model year. In about 2009, they slightly redesigned it so they could add the multi-displacement system to it where it shuts down four cylinders. Uh, so they did that in about 2009, and since then, this engine hasn't changed any. This is the same engine that they've been selling for almost 15 years now. And if you go back and look at those old owner's manuals from like 2012, 2014, 2016, I posted a link to that in the first video also. You will see that over the years, they have toyed around with the uh, oil viscosity specification. Some years, 5W20. Some years, they mentioned you can use 5W30. Then, you know, in like in recent time, like the last couple of years, they've gone all the way down to 0W20. Okay, so they keep changing the oil spec, even though the engine itself does not change. And the reason they do that, as we described in the first video, is for fuel economy reasons. They have to EPA certify these things and they go through a battery of fuel economy tests with it, you know, and so the better they do, the more money they save in EPA fines and all of that kind of stuff. And to an automaker who's mass producing hundreds and thousands of engines like this, if they can save 
0.03 miles per gallon, then it's worth it to them to do that. So that's why they use these watery oils and things like that. Uh, but for the guys like us who want to keep these things long term, you know, and you work with the truck, you want it to last, you're going to be towing with it. You know, if you're planning on keeping it long term, you want this thing to last, right? So it's better uh, from our standpoint to use a viscosity that's going to protect the valve train and lubricate properly. And that's why I've been pointing out that I highly recommend you switch these things early to a 5W30 at minimum. Now, if you've got a truck that's like 60,000, 80,000, 100,000 miles on the odometer, and it's always had that watery 20 weight oil, and you've got the valve train ticking and rattling, you may not be able to fix it by upgrading your viscosity because at this point the damage is already done. But if you got a new truck with a new engine like this and you start running a high quality synthetic oil 5W30 from day one, I think you're really going to find that it gives you great results long term. And like I showed you already, this truck right here, I'm telling you, this thing, it sounded terrible when I first got it. Uh, but everybody said it's the Hemi tick. It's normal, so I didn't think a whole lot of it there for a while. But, it, I mean, you start this thing up in the morning, you would think that it, the engine was about to grenade on you. It was ridiculous. And ever since I've been running this 5W30, it's been as smooth as silk. The fuel, anyway, the fuel economy is still great. The power is still great on this thing. The cam phasers work exactly like they're supposed to. There's been no issues whatsoever. So all that stuff that people commonly talk about online, it's all garbage. I'm telling you, 5W30 is the way to go on these engines. So having said that, I'm going to change the oil again today. Uh, the oil life meter is showing 37% remaining, but I'm going to go ahead and do it because it's been 7,000 miles or so, and I've got a, a trip coming up next week towing my trailer. So I'm just going to go ahead and service it again today. And I got some more 5W30 full synthetic to put back in here again, obviously. I've been trying to find the Pennzoil Ultra Platinum, but it's like you can't find that stuff anywhere right now. I don't know if there's like a national shortage on it or what. So like I say, you know, the brand doesn't really matter. Uh, if you can't find Pennzoil, some people like Amsoil, some people like Valvoline, you know, Quaker State. There's all kinds of different brands out there. Just make sure it's a reputable vendor, uh, you know, a reputable brand name. You know, and you'll get some pretty high quality stuff if you stick with something you know like that. So anyway, I just wanted to update you on that. Yes, it did fix my Hemi tick. Long term here, it's going to be fixed. It hasn't come back. It still purrs like a kitten. I expect that it's going to continue to purr like a kitten as long as I give it proper lubrication. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll talk to you later.